on here to uh, the biggest challenge that you experienced. So when you started your business, what was the biggest obstacle you encountered and how did you overcome that? Definitely during the build out phase of the retail location, um, we had some issues with contractors and it was huge issues. Um, issues that like one guy walked off, he had quoted me seven grand. Mm -hmm. He walked off and then the next lowest quote came in at 30 grand. And so we had to make up this $23,000 deficit. Now, luckily I was able, that was for an electrician. I was able to find one that came in much closer to the seven grand point, but he mm -hmm. did me a huge favor. Uh, their name is Delaware Electric. I will praise them all day long. They, um, they really came in. I explained the situation, what had happened to them. And sure. if it wasn't for them and then my plumber, which was Hanson Heating and Plumbing, um, they stepped in when my mechanical engineer screwed me. So my plumber wound up doing an insane amount of work for me that he shouldn't have had to do. He just stepped in and was like, we're going to do it, Mary, let's go. And my electrician stepped in and I mean, really took a lot less money than he could have gotten from me. Sure. And honestly, like my plumber waited weeks after I opened to even collect his final payment because he knew I didn't have the money. So awesome. we were so close to not being able to finish the project because we were at zero when we opened sure. and it was the grace of the contractors that I had built these relationships with that I will forever praise their praise their businesses because they could have very easily just said nope you don't have money I'm done and they didn't they waited till I could afford it and they did the work and they took their payment when they could and yeah that's awesome I will make sure that I include links to both uh, Hanson Heating and Plumbing and uh, Delaware Electric at the end of the podcast. Thank so you. Thank you. Uh, resources like that are, are, you know, rare. So you need to have good people like that. Um, with the whole COVID situation over 2020, how have you guys fared through the whole COVID economy? Um, what hardships have you seen? What's, what's the impact to your business? Uh, when it first happened, it was pretty devastating. Um, we were in a very unique situation where I had been a legal business. I had paid my taxes. Um, I'm very big on you should do things legally. So I am all for people that want to start businesses out of their homes, but please do it legally because right now what we're seeing is a lot of in-home bakers pop up. They don't pay taxes. They can undercut prices severely and, and we can't keep up with that because we do pay taxes and we have overhead. So um, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> <laughs> the COVID economy. Oh, with the COVID. COVID. So yeah. um, we took a huge hit with when COVID first started. Um, we shut down before we were mandated to shut down because I took the stance of I could not live with myself if I got someone ill, regardless of if it was an accident or not, I couldn't live with myself. We have contracts with Del Webb, which is the older population. I do decorating classes with them every six-ish weeks. Mm -hmm. And um, I know I do a ton of parties for little kids, pregnant moms, all the people that are in these compromised ages sure. that it's dangerous for them. And so we had a meeting before anything. And I had told my staff, we're shutting down for two weeks. We have to. That was back in March and we all thought this was going to go away in two weeks. So we shut down and then little did we know our doors would stay locked for months. Um, we did do delivery service, which was a huge challenge. We had never been set up for a delivery service ever. That's just not something we offered. Mm -hmm. So it was me and Angie and my mom. And um, we were I was doing the baking and she was doing the packing and my mom was delivering with my husband and it was just crazy. And, but we had to, to stay afloat. Um, and it took months and months and months before we were able to actually open up the doors for people to come inside again. And we actually changed our establishment to no seating at all. So we used to have an occupancy of 32 and now we have zero. No one can sit inside. A huge part of my business plan and my business in general, we do birthday parties for kids. So we do decorating classes. I do decorating classes for um, really for anyone. 
And, but a lot of birthday parties, that was our Saturdays were from open to close birthday parties. We can't do those anymore. So that was a huge portion of our sales just out the window. So we had to just reconfigure how we did things. We went from doing huge things like four tiered wedding cakes to little tiny six inch cakes where only the bride and groom are going to cut them. So we went from, um, really doing parties I would say, you know, an average party, your sale ticket's going to be right around the $300 mark Mm -hmm. to tickets that are around $30 to $50. And so it was just trying to get new customers in. Everything is now individually packaged so that there's no chance of any type of contamination anywhere. It's the safest we can possibly be. Um, And not doing anything large anymore. It's really just a whole bunch of miniature stuff. But luckily, we've, you know, we, started picking up once our doors reopened our customers are so loyal i mean honestly we we should have gone under by all rights we should have gone under and they kept us afloat so um i I really owe it to them they come back week after week we have a huge our return customer base is insane um so my husband says and it's we know our customers by name they're like family to us too and i think it's just that atmosphere of they feel invested in us just as much as we are invested in them because we've all been a part of each other's lives and they've helped me grow this business. That's an excellent uh, point with customer retention. I mean, loyal customers, repeat customers coming back, uh, helping you survive through an economy like this. That's, that's an incredible story. If you want to recommend somebody to appear on the podcast as a guest, please email us at info at opsqc.com. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, please reach out to us at the same email. We'd love to have your support.